Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Dr. Beth Merwin. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today for what's expected to be another incredible presentation from the 20, 2021 to 2022 grant webinar series of the Global Rural Nursing Exchange Network. Today's session is being recorded for future listening we encourage you to share the recorded session with your peers, and it should be available by the end of the week. Um, please share with your students, colleagues, um, and others, and especially if they're considering applying for a similar grant for this upcoming year. Next slide. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge and thank the MCHC Foundation's support of the global nursing, of the global rural nursing exchange network. Uh, and particularly would like to um, introduce Corey Kilgore, who is executive director of the MHCH Foundation. The MHCH Foundation generously funds the Global Rural Nursing Virtual Collaboration Learning Grant Program, which um, funded the competitively selected projects within this program. And as a reminder, uh, applications are currently being accepted for the upcoming grant year. If you're interested in learning more, please check the website um, for details. Corey? All right, well, thank you, Beth. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I guess I would first just like to thank, thank you for coming back to share your work um, with um, a, a wider audience. I know sometimes that can be a little difficult in the summer months when people start to go to their different directions. So thank you so much for investing your time to share your work. I guess I would just like to say, so you guys are one of five recipients um, of the Global Rural Nursing um, Collaboration Learning Grant. Um, historically, the MHCH Foundation is, is not really a grant making foundation. This is our very first time to do this. So um, I would like to kind of acknowledge that as well and let you know that each of you, um, because this is the first time, you've also allowed us to really learn quite a bit about how we might make these grants even more effective in the future. So um, like Beth said, the applications are open. And so we encourage everyone to apply. Um, it is okay to apply a, a second time. Um, so um, anyway, so thank you for um, being um, a part of our first group so we can learn together. Um, the other thing I would like to say is I think congratulations is in order um, for you guys. So I know that you will be sh also sharing your work in Edinburgh, Scotland here at the end of, it's end of June, end of July. Um, that is something that we're really proud of um, because this is one of our first this is the first year to do this. So that's really exciting. And I hope that you guys are just as proud as we are. This will be the, it's the 33rd International Nursing Research Congress, which is actually a Sigma International Nursing Honor, Honor Society um, conference. So that is outstanding. And um, we're really proud of your work. Um, I also am really proud of the way um, your group has engaged with the online community um, that we really use as the platform for the Global Rural Nursing Exchange Network. Um, it has really been, you've integrated it within your work, you've allowed us to learn how to improve the tool um, and hopefully grow the tool and share it with others for the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Corey. And before we begin today's presentation, a little housekeeping. We will have plenty of time for questions at the end of the presentation, but you can go ahead and put your questions in the chat um, at any time, and we will get to them towards uh, after the presentations. Um, and at this point, 
I am happy to introduce today's presenters. Abby Gramer Horton is an assistant professor at the University of Alabama's Capstone College of Nursing and is a four-time graduate of the University of Alabama. She earned a Bachelor of Science in Political Science in 2006, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 2010, and a Master of Science in Nursing in Rural Case Management in 2011. Most recently, she completed her doctorate in Instructional Leadership with an emphasis on nursing education in 2021. Dr. Horton currently teaches in the undergraduate nursing program at CCN with more than 10 years of higher education experience. Her interests in nursing practice and research include health policy reform, diversity, equity, inclusion, and issues concerning health and wellness, mental health, holistic care, access to care, spirituality, complementary and alternative medicine practices. Dr. Horton teaches part-time for the University Honors Program and serves as the Wilbama Wellness Class Educator on UA's campus as a certified health and life coach. Dr. Horton is active in the Alabama State Nurses Association at both the state and district level. She is the 2013 recipient of the ASNA New Member Excellence Award and the 2018 CCNA, CCN Ernestine Tucker Opening Doors Inclusion and Engagement Award. Dr. Horton is also a Blackburn Institute of Fellow and remains active on UA's campus in the water West Alabama community. Also uh, joining Dr. Horton is Phoebe Tambla Jamison, who is a lecturer in community health nursing at Kamazoo University of Health Sciences School of Nursing in the Community Health Studies Department. In 2009, she received a minor in global nursing from Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, followed by her Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the University of Mal uh, Malawi, uh, Kamazoo College of Nursing in the same year. She earned a pediatric assessment skills um, recognition from the Royal College of Nursing in Birmingham in 2011, a postgraduate university certificate in midwifery from the University of Maui, Kamazoo College of Nursing in 2013, and a master's in public health in epidemiology and biostatistics from the University of Melbourne in 2018. Prior to her current position, Phoebe served as a nursing officer at the Ministry of Health, Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital on the Pediatric High Dependency Unit, where she later became Senior Nursing Officer in the Pediatric Accident and Emergency Department, followed by the Principal Nursing Officer in the Neurosurgical Department. Throughout her career, Phoebe has received many awards and honors and other accolades, most recently being named Best QECH Nurse Leader in 2019 from the National Organization of Nurses and Midwives of Maui. She serves as the KCNBT Campus Welfare Chairperson, is dedicated to the welfare of health workers in COVID-19 centers, um, mentors and assists youth in finding international scholarships, and serves as a GRNEN ambassador. Her interests are in fighting non-communicable diseases in Maui, especially diabetes, where she takes a lead role in health education as well as community screening together with the young nurses she teaches 
at Kamazoo University of Health Sciences. And now I would like to turn the presentation over to Abby and Phoebe to share examining the impact of Maui, Alabama Global Nursing Education Rural Vaccine Project. Thank you for being with us and being our presenters. Okay, thank you so much, Beth, uh, for the wonderful introduction. I'll take you through the first part and then uh, Dr. Abby is going to uh, join in as well as finish up with the uh, last part of the presentation. So we are going to look into uh, the GRNE in collaboration that was the University of Alabama, which is in the US, as well as Kamuzu University of Health Sciences, which is in Malawi, Africa. So we are representing uh, our teams from uh, Malawi as well as uh, the USA. Thank you. So our presentation online, we are going to have an acknowledgement of the faculty and student collaborators that went through this project. We are going to introduce the project as well as its rationale. We'll have a brief introduction of the schools as well as individuals that were involved. We are going to present the grants objectives, the goals, the project overview, how the grant funding was utilized, we will review the outcomes as well as the lessons learned. We would like to thank the University of Alabama Capstone College of Nursing, the faculty, staff, students, and administrators who made this project possible, including Dr. Paige Johnson and Dr. Gibran Mangus, and our students Anna Mosley, Aaron Bond, Andrea Shiner, Caitlin Liu, Leah Stanford, Carrington Kennedy, Madison Giroux, Laura Mesner, Sierra Riggins, Terry Millsaps, and Josh Cuff. Thank you. So in Malawi, special thanks to faculty members from the Kuhe School of Nursing and School of Midwifery. We had Associate Professor Belinda Gombachika, who is the Vice Chancellor of the school. Associate Professor uh, Abigail Kazembe in the School of Midwifery. We had Dr. Ile Stirinda, myself, as well as Mrs. Eribe Napranga. Katola and their significant uh, contribution couldn't go unnoticed. Next slide. From the students, uh, we had students from the School of Nursing in the Community Health Studies Year 3 uh, who were selected based on their merit um, performance. So we had Augustino Kanyenda, Vunjani Maman, Anna Mbale, Memore Piri, Chifundo Chikaonika, uh, Rachel Mamlima, Fatsileni Buanali, as well as Aisha John. So as you mentioned, this was a collaborative community of faculty as well as students from the Kamuzu University of Health Sciences here in Malawi and the University of Alabama in the USA. So basically, both groups explored the strength and the challenges that the rural communities are facing in relation to increasing the uptake of vaccines, especially those that are used to prevent COVID-19. So we thought nurses who are knowledgeable about the safety and importance of getting vaccinated are allies to reach herd immunity in our communities. So those who are hesitant hold sway among the population they serve. So that's why we had to enhance their knowledge of working with the communities before they intervene with the community themselves. So why did we do this project? Uh, given the ongoing nature of COVID-19, by the time we are commencing this project, we had raw rates uh, of vaccine uptake, especially among our rural populations globally. So research was very vital to understand and explore the reasons why this was the situation. So basically, Malawi and Alabama are largely rural areas. So vaccine uptake to prevent COVID-19 in both areas was lagging. So for instance, at the uh, start of the project in Alabama, uh, we had 33% of the population that was vaccinated. While in Malawi, only 1% of the population was uh, vaccinated, even though uh, that was covering 70% of the, the vaccines that we received. While in Malawi, supply was still an issue. In Alabama, the vaccine was widely available. So the project, aimed at examining the reasons why this was so, and also 
how were the best ways to tackle uh, this uh, situation through collaborating nursing students as well as the faculty members of the schools. So in a nutshell, vaccine hesitancy is defined as the delay in acceptance or refusal of vaccine despite the availability of the vaccine services. Next slide. So a brief introduction of the schools, Kamis University of Health Sciences is one of the Malawi public universities which offer both medical nursing and biomedical health sciences. So it constitutes different schools, School of Nursing, Midwifery, Medicine and Oral Health, School of Global and Public Health and School of Arid Health and Life Sciences. So this project was implemented in the School of Nursing which provides undergraduate post basic postgraduate and doctoral program. So KUHE School of Nursing is a World Health Organization collaborative center for interprofessional education and collaborative practice since 2012. So for over 35 years, it has been improving education of healthcare providers by providing the knowledge, professional skills, conducting research and participating in the creation and implementation of health policies and strategies in Malawi through their innovative teaching approaches. So the faculty aims at transforming students into the next generation of expert healthcare leaders and managers just like we are now. Next slide. And the University of Alabama is home to the Capstone College of Nursing and CCN is recognized as a national innovator in clinical simulation and nursing education, utilizing simulation and simulators and telehealth technology in teaching research and healthcare delivery. And we partner with a number of well-respected institutions and healthcare facilities to provide a wonderful clinical experience for our students, including our community partners, which this course was our community health course for our fifth semester senior students. We offer a variety of degree programs from the BSN to the RN to BSN, master's and doctoral programs, including our joint PhD program, EDD and DMP, and CCN is widely recognized as a leader in education in the U.S. Okay, so the grant objectives and goals basically were to share with, with each other the strengths and the challenges that, that we face in our respective communities, enriching herd immunity in the population we serve, specifically with COVID-19 vaccine. So we wanted to identify evidence-based practice strategies to provide the nursing community with knowledge to counter vaccine myths and disinformation and increase public support for the individual and societal benefits of vaccination. So we also wanted to jointly develop culturally appropriate interventions in order to implement in our respective communities and to present our work in our respective schools. So project overview, I've already explained, it was a collaboration between the schools and basically exploring strength and challenges that the rural communities are facing in, in areas of COVID vaccine-19 uptake. So we had this project in support from the MHCF, that's the Madison Hutherson Christian Hamilton Foundation. Next slide. So our project on uh, timeline ran through August 2021. We had different activities, planning, recruiting, and we were having different meetings between the uh, 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 staff as well as the students. And we started uh, having our um, Zoom meetings where we are having sessions, which we are looking into a community approach, different ways of how to tackle the problems that we are facing. And the whole project ran through August 15, 2021, and it almost ended uh, uh, week of April 2022, uh, April 25. Next slide. So to, to do this, we had bi-weekly meetings over eight months where different topics were presented by faculty members. We were paired from two institutions from Kuhes and uh, University of Alabama. And also the students themselves were also paired where, where they were sharing media resources. So meetings were held virtually via Zoom, but we also collaborated uh, using emails, messaging, as well as we have a community page on journey and platform which facilitated their learning from both sides. So we covered different topics related vaccine hesitancy and rural health care, which were taught by both the uh, paired faculty members and the paired student groups. Next. 
So we talked about cultural humility in order to be able to uh, relate with the communities we'll be working with and also health behavior in order to understand different behaviors related to health, health education, because we aimed at educating uh, the communities. We had topics, program planning, implementation and evaluation. We had motivating uh, motivation in interviewing, which is very vital uh, for vaccine hesitancy intervention and also vaccine development mechanism and safety. All these topics, they helped both of us to plan and implement and achieve the project objectives as well as facilitating community mobilization for COVID-19 vaccination. Next slide. So I'll present for the Malawi side and IB is going to take, take you through uh, the Alabama side. So the Malawi students were involved in uh, COVID-19 disease itself and COVID-19 vaccine education sessions. And uh, these sessions were followed by the actual uh, vaccine immunization session at one row area of Mpemba in Brantaya called Kuloya village, that's in Southern Malawi. And this area was selected due to low rate of vaccination, which generally is low in Malawi, as you already mentioned, but it was also uh, close to the students that were uh, involved in this project. So before the implementation, during the preparation stage, the students had an opportunity to identify factors and the reasons that facilitated the community members to be vaccinated or not through chats with the community members. And the majority of community members were hesitant to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Next. So the reluctance or refusal in the rural community to vaccinate was due to various factors. Uh, among others include misinformation and misconceptions about COVID-19 vaccines. They had stories about side effects that were happening to people following vaccination. Some had religious beliefs that hindered them to get COVID-19 vaccines. And also others were wondering why COVID-19 vaccine was developed so quickly as compared to other vaccines that take years to be um, produced. And also others complained about long distances for them to access the COVID-19 vaccines in our healthcare system. Next. So people really asked a lot of questions. Some of them include, uh, was it true that people, uh, when they get vaccines, they'll turn into wild animals in the future? And also some thought people would die. And also because we are majorly a Christian society, others also asked maybe if they get the vaccine, they're not going to enter the kingdom of God. So those are some of the reasons that people uh, raised when we had the sessions. Next. So that's a picture of us because stays in the community and uh, teaching and a good number of people after the sensitization uh, session, they were willing to receive the COVID-19 vaccine because they were cleared off of their misconceptions. We had a productive discussions with this community. Next. So those are some uh, pictures. There were those sessions with the community leaders and also during our vaccination session of the community members. Next. So during the education session of the COVID vaccine and COVID-19 disease, disease itself, we had 87 community members that attended the health education. And during the presentation, the students used the information from the Zoom lessons, like respecting the culture of the people and incorporating their views and ideas. And they were guided by lesson plans for the two presentations. So with COVID disease, they talked about the definition, the signs and symptoms, diagnosis, how it is managed, complications, and how best they can prevent the disease. And with the uh, vaccine, they defined the vaccine, examples of the vaccines, especially COVID-19, how they are developed, the benefits, side effects, Effects, and they had a ample time to discuss with them on the misinformation and mis misconceptions. So together, there were del uh, deliberations with the community, how they understood the lessons and how they were thinking about it. People were now creative of, of their misconceptions, which was a very good feedback. Next. 
So the next phase was vaccinating the community members who are not vaccinated. And this was done in collaboration with the care, uh, healthcare workers of Mpemba Health Center here in Brantia in Yazon with the district health office. So both students, members of staff and healthcare workers of Mpemba Health Centers conducted the activity. We had 57 people who turned out for the vaccination of the day and majority got vaccinated. The remaining had already received first doses, but they were not due for the second dose and the number of, uh, of people received the vaccines on outreach days, which were recommended by us and the students. So at least they had a lot of people who got vaccinated done before this project. Next. So the grant funding, we had two, uh, 2,500 US dollars. For the Malawi community, 100% of the funds was used in different ways, and majorly they were used on internet bundles. So GRN funds assisted a lot because it had challenges with institutional internet. So personalized internet was accessed for the Zoom sessions that were taking place bi-weekly. But it also covered the students that staff, uh, staff transportation from the school to where uh, the activities were taking place, the lunch, and also we had community snacks that was even motivating for members of the community to come for the sessions as well as the resources for the vaccination and activities plus also the stipend as these students are conducting the activity outside their jurisdiction. So basically our outcomes from this side, um, community uh, intervention was done with increased uptake of COVID-19 vaccine in Kuloya uh, catchment area. We also had a number of students as well as faculty members who got immunized because of our activity. So we really had an, a positive impact from this uh, project. So over to you, Abby for uh, Alabama. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful collaboration and so important for our students to be able to have this global community and connection with our friends in Malawi. We asked our students as part of their community health project to think about a community that needed some additional resources and some teaching about vaccine hesitancy. And so part of their project was to create a presentation for us Part of it was to also have a deliverable that they could in implement into the community. And so I pulled several of their slides to show you parts of their project and really to recognize and honor their work. And so they really learned more about vaccine hesitancy, which is something that was a new term for our students. And talking about the delay in acceptance or refusal of vaccines despite the availability of vaccine services, that was so important to their understanding of how to really engage communities who are considered vulnerable. And so they talked about the lack of confidence, complacency, or lack of convenience that oftentimes uh, is really a part of the vaccine hesitancy. Also, our students acknowledged the misinformation that was being shared publicly and on social media as part of the ongoing issue with people wanting to be compliant with vaccine administration. And so they talked a lot about the timeline around the vaccine administration side effects and other challenges within a community. They chose the community of Bibb County because of its low rate of vaccine uptake and wanted to really survey the community. Because they are considered you know, outsiders to the community, that's so important when we think about engaging a, another community or a group of vulnerable folks. And so there was some hesitancy and uncertainty around the ability to gain access to the community and build that trusting relationship. And so they explored some of those barriers in their project. So our population assessment, some data that was pulled, Bibb County is about an hour's drive from Tuscaloosa, where we're housed uh, at the University of Alabama and in the Tuscaloosa County. And so just an hour, uh, you know, kind of northwest of here, we have people in Bibb County who, uh, you know, have lack of access to education, lack of uh, resources for health insurance, under insurance is a huge concern, as well as no health insurance. And we put some demographics here just to give you a makeup of the population that you can see. Only about 33 to 34% 
of the citizens of Bibb County at the beginning of the project in the fall were actually vaccinated and they ranked 58th in vaccine rates uh, out of the 67 counties in Alabama. And so hopefully that gives you an idea of the type of challenges we faced with actually bringing vaccine education to the community. So we looked at the Bibb County Health Department, which of course had done a lot of education around vaccine administration. And one identified challenge that the students really focused in on is the fact of the health department only offering vaccines for an hour a day and only on select days. And so that really limits the availability if you have one hour to get the vaccine in a given 24 hour period from 3.30 to 4.30, that's really gonna limit access for people who may be working in shift work positions and things of that nature. And so their idea was to be able to actually go in and administer vaccines. And unfortunately, there were several barriers to them being able to do that within the community. And so they shifted their focus to actually building relationships and education to be able to hopefully continue this relationship into the future. So we asked them to use the nursing diagnosis, you know, ADPA uh, acronym to really look at the challenge. And so their diagnosis of the problem was that the vaccine rates in Bibb County are significantly lower for the overall state and of course in the U.S. as well. And so they wanted to be able to go and provide education, build relationships and trust and then perhaps be able to offer vaccine clinics in the future. And they related this to the Healthy People 2030 objective of increasing the vaccine administration for those aged 19 years and older so that they are compliant with that vaccine schedule. So in their planning, they discovered many of the challenges that I've mentioned, uh, but what they did find is that there was a grocery store, a locally owned and managed grocery store that was really agreeable to having students come in and offer education. And so the students were really inspired to take this project on, build that relationship with this food land manager and uh, was asked if we could come and visit for a couple of days during the spring semester to be able to offer uh, fresh fruits and vegetables that we purchased from the grocery store. And then we set up tables to be able to offer education pamphlets that the students actually created themselves. We used part of our funds to be able to print those. And then we left some of those brochures with the grocery store to be able to hand out to their customers. And so the students really enjoyed getting to be very hands on and actually initiating that relationship. So some of the challenges were that the food lane managers were concerned about having a controversial topic um, during a holiday week. Um, in you know, a busy time of the afternoon to be able to have customers coming through and seeing us. We set up tables outside. And in addition to talking about COVID-19 vaccine, we know that cardiovascular health is so important to our communities in Alabama. It's one that we really face challenges with education around because of our obesity rates. And so we offered cardiovascular health uh, education along with cholesterol management. We offered blood pressure checks and um, that was a way to really have folks come and visit us where we could give them some healthy snack options that we purchased from the grocery store, really investing back into the community that was allowing us to visit. And with that, that was an inroad for us to be able to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine. So more information on the Healthy People 2030 objective and so we listed some other important facts and statistics here about, you know, the uptake of vaccine administration and uh, some of the practices that CDC outlined for those in rural communities. And so that was the information that they used to be able to create the brochure that I'm going to show you a little later. So learning objectives, they wanted to help these folks achieve a greater understanding of uh, you know, rural citizens in Alabama, the challenges they face, and why there may be some vaccine hesitancy among certain communities. They wanted to be able to provide reliable information about the Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, which were the two most popular here in Alabama, and to educate the clients on the benefits of the vaccine, as well as preventative measures. So not just vaccine information, but also preventative health measures for 
hopefully slowing the spread and contraction of COVID-19. So on the implementation day, we spent six hours over two days at the Foodland Grocery Store in Bibb County, and we provided vaccine information, cardiovascular health and disease management, and free blood pressure checks. And one of their memorable experiences was actually discussing with a client who had recently been discharged from the hospital. Uh, he had had a recent MI and uh, he actually stopped at the grocery store just because he saw our table and asked if we could check his blood pressure. And while he was talking with the students, he you know, was able to take uh, some of the snacks, some of the healthy options, and said that that was really a helpful thing for him, having just been discharged. So we had granola bars, oranges, apples, and waters, and we had grocery sacks that we would fill for the, the folks that stopped by. And uh, he became very teary-eyed and said, I really appreciate you coming and, and giving back to our community um, in that way. And of course, being from Alabama and being in the Tuscaloosa area, um, it was important that they had that connection to our university and um, that they were feeling like we could be a, a resource for them. And so um, the students really felt like this was a memorable experience because not only did they get to hand him a pamphlet about COVID-19 and really start to plant a seed there for him, but also to give some practical help around his new diagnosis. And so that was something that was really impactful for all of us. So we did spend those two days at the county and we really developed relationships with those in the community and people on day two actually stopped back by to say hello because they had visited with us the day before, which the students really felt was, uh, you know, an experience that they will never forget because just those simple conversations, they felt led to come back and say hello uh, and brought neighbors and, and other people with them to visit with us. So that was great. Some strengths and challenges that we identified with the project, we were able to provide free health promotion and healthy snacks. We were able to invest uh, several hundred dollars back into that grocery store, which is you know, a local grocery store for that community. We were able to help a vulnerable rural community learn um, about COVID-19, but we were also able to learn from them and invest in its community members. And you know, we have a lifelong partnership now with this uh, grocery store manager. We're welcome back anytime, which is wonderful. We also you know, had some challenges with it being a more controversial topic and the inability to provide vaccines. And also the inability to be able to survey the clients and the community members that did engage with us. That was something the students wanted to do was to ask or survey the folks that they interacted with. You know, What are your hesitancies? around the vaccine, but because of the controversial nature and the you know, IRB requirements, we were not able to actually do that survey. So those were some of the challenges we faced. So this is the brochure that the students created and that we had printed using funds from the grant. And uh, they were really pleased to be able to offer this. What they did notice is that if we asked folks if they would want a brochure on COVID-19, a lot of times the people coming into the grocery store would say no. And so we started putting this brochure along with a cholesterol brochure together. And we would offer them the free snacks with the two brochures. And we would just mention that this was free education for them. And that was very helpful and beneficial to being able to get that information into the hands of the customers. And so um, that was a good technique that the students learned and commented on, you know, to be able to offer them something that maybe they weren't um, initially interested in, along with something else that was also helpful, but was of more interest to that, that population. So some of the measures that we looked at achieving understanding of rural citizens in Alabama have higher rates of vaccine hesitancy, why it's difficult to provide reliable resources to educate the clients, and then the education on the vaccine, how that preventative measures um, really, you know, comply with the CDC guidelines and how we can educate. So achieving, providing, and educating were some of the things that students really focused on with this project. So in looking at their learning objectives and in looking at the relationships that they were trying to build with the community partners, uh, they were most pleased with establishing the relationship with the, the county food land manager. And uh, to be able to have someone where we can go and we can have a community buy-in and we can be welcomed by people in their community who 
uh, are really invested and who live and work and who have you know key stakeholders involved in the projects are so important for continued partnerships and so that's one thing that we really wanted to focus on um, but we also feel like we successfully developed this educational brochure not just for vaccines but also for the preventative health measures and implementing other measures like the screenings for high blood pressure, which we were able to identify two folks who were not aware of their hypertension uh, previously. So they were able to get that um, as a screen and the information for referrals in their community to be able to get follow up. And so we felt really pleased about that because that helped us build trust that we're not just there to teach you about vaccine administration, but we're also here to really help invest in your overall health. And so that was very important to us and to the community. So in summary, we feel like our students collaboratively really worked well together, that they learned strategies from one another, and that both the students from Malawi and the students from Alabama were able to discuss and talk about similar challenges related to COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy, and also to learn about how nursing is, you know, in each of the communities, how we're received, how we're educated. Um, our students felt very, you know, impressed and, and very, um, you know, welcomed by the Malawi folks just really being very vulnerable and sharing their experiences. And they felt vulnerable in sharing their challenges and experiences, learning about uh, how the programs of nursing are different and how they're similar, how rural communities in Alabama and Malawi are similar. Um, having been paired together to work on a project was really important in building those relationships among our students and faculty. So that's something that was done early on. And having them create digital content that were we shared each Zoom session was very important. And so not only were faculty involved in teaching the content, but students also were led in student-led content. And then the collaboration with the different key stakeholders and really learning about how we can partner together to best meet the needs of rural communities uh, was very impressive and um, I think inspiring for our students on both sides. So we really felt that our rural outreach initiative to promote vaccine confidence was bolstered uh, by the fact that we were problem solving together and we were certainly uh, you know, very much aware that the similarities in our populations were uh, much more than just uh, the differences that you might could point out. So some of the strengths, the productive relationships that we formed, the student schedules with their academic calendar, uh, with them being able to, you know, negotiate and navigate their schedules, which we were on different terms and semesters, uh, the fact that the students made this work because they were so invested in the project we feel is a strength of theirs. The fact that we had active participation from every member every session was also uh, just very inspiring to us. We had some network issues but everyone was always present for the calls and we are so grateful for uh, GRNEN and the support that we have had through the platform through the relationships, the communication, the funds, and the resources. It's been just phenomenal. And we had support from both of our institutions, both at the University of Alabama and Kamazoo. Uh, so many people behind the scenes involved in these projects that we are so grateful for in continuing these relationships into the future. And some of the challenges that we had were broadband internet access issues from our friends in Malawi. Certainly that was a challenge. Sometimes it was that they weren't able to be on video. And so we did see that as a challenge to the relationship building, but they were on camera and present as much as they could be with their inner minute connectivity issues. Time zone differences did become a challenge uh, with the daylight savings time when that change happened. Uh, and we, you know, we moved our clocks, but Malawi didn't move their clocks. We did have a, a scheduling issue for our final session. And that was a good lesson learned. And then the lack of data that we were able to pull from our different communities uh, was a challenge because we were not able to meet our, some of our initial goals, but we did really lay a strong foundation for continued work in our communities. And then some other lessons learned. 
we learned that distance is not an issue for collaborating, that if there is a will, there's a way. And so learning from anywhere and being able to apply what we're learning together uh, in this way, it was so important to improving our ability and our capabilities to actually go in and make change. And so living worlds apart, we felt like we were very much connected on the health issues and the nursing challenges and even the academic challenges that we sometimes see in our quest to help improve our communities. And we know that we want to really invest in more outreach programs and have students take a more active role in implementing uh, different projects that help not only with the uptake of vaccines, um, but also preventative health measures and really helping to connect our rural communities with resources that seem to be more abundant in our you know, communities around these larger higher education institutions. Yeah. Abby, would you like to do the conclusion? All right, thank you, Abby. Uh, so in conclusion, we saw our students and faculty members engaging in projects and we learned different strategies from each other in order to overcome similar challenges as you have seen in relation to vaccine hesitancy. We also conclude that rural communities face similar health challenges in both uh, communities, whether in, uh, in Malawi or in the U.S. So implementation models can be developed and applied once modified in order to, uh, to curtail these health challenges. So this project has really helped us to understand that uh, sensitization not only on COVID-19 disease and vaccine, but also in other diseases uh, that we are currently facing, can really increase the uptake of the health information, uh, clear out the misunderstandings, as well as people accessing uh, the vaccines, different vaccines in both the US and in Malawi, Africa. So we also saw the response from the community after sensitization, as well as immunization uh, session. It clearly indicated that we can reach people through these awareness awareness sessions and outreach sessions in order to increase the uptake of the vaccines, in order to tackle different challenges as our friends in Alabama did with um, the, the BPs, uh, uh, tackling and communicable diseases. So it's really very vital, sure. We have our references listed here for you. And then another way of getting in touch with us would be to email if you have any questions or feedback. We would love to connect with you, so feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or feedback from today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your terrific presentation, Abby and Phoebe. Really appreciate it. I'd like to remind everyone that you can ask questions in the chat. So um, while you're thinking of any questions you might have, we'll get started with one that came in early in the presentation. And this question um, was related uh, to understanding the focus of um, this research. It says, I'm trying to understand the focus of the research. Was it on health workers, nurses, or communities? Okay, I will take that. Uh, basically, per se, uh, let me start to say that it wasn't research like uh, the one we do the whole process. This was a uh, project implementation uh, based on the current challenges that we faced uh, uh, due to COVID vaccine. So this project's focus was both on the collaboration of uh, faculty members and the students, plus it was also uh, focused on reaching the community in order to manage the vaccine hesitancy in relation to COVID-19. So Abby can also add on that. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, we did have an emphasis on implementing a clinical implementation project for our students as part of their capstone project for graduating. And, and that's housed in their community health course. And so, with our research, what we decided to do beyond that, because we were so inspired by the GRNEN and the collaborative uh, you know, partnerships that we were seeing, the interactions on the platform, we decided to take it a step further and look at 
our cultural attitudes of our students, student engagement within the classroom. And so we did on the Alabama side of things decide to survey our students and we're in data analysis now to look to see, do global experiences like this, even though it's virtual, do those impact the students differently than those who are simply in a community and doing a project without the collaborative piece. And so we're hopeful to have some good information to share soon. And we're also doing some other collaborative work with our, our friends and colleagues in Malawi to look to see if they notice differences. Um, but that was outside the scope of the original project. We were just wanted to take it a step further because we did have such great uh, interactions and community building there. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, um, not clear about the results in rural US. Did the vaccine uptake improve with the program on that side? Sure, that is not something that we were able to actually measure given the nature of our partnership and the fact that we were not able to work with the uh, you know, Bibb County Department of Public Health as we had originally hoped. Um, but we do know that there were many efforts going on in the communities and vaccine uptake did improve over time, especially when you saw um, the kind of phase three of COVID start at the end of 2021 when many more people were becoming ill. And so I think there were a number of effects that did increase the vaccine uptake for rural communities within Alabama. And I hope that we were a small part of that. I do know that part of our goal was not only to impact the communities, but it was also to impact our students. And so what was measurable about our project is the actual inspiration for many of our students who hadn't considered rural health, hadn't considered community health. They are now much more invested in that rural health focus. And for us, that was a huge win. I hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you. What misconceptions did the community in Maui have, uh, which may, may have made them uh, choose not to get vaccinated? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, during presentation, some of them, uh, we talked about religious beliefs um, to say that uh, they will not get into the kingdom of God, for example. Uh, not only that, they also hate that people will uh, turn into beasts in the future when they receive the vaccine. So those are some kind of uh, uh, concerns that people were hearing from um, other others. So with the way the uh, students presented the information as well as the vaccine development process and why it was so prompt to have this vaccine uh, to be administered to people because of the nature of the condition itself, how severe it was before. Uh, um, so they were able to understand. And also we gave examples of the other vaccines that people in Malawi received, which were like a uh, of which now we are also having polio vaccines. Those vaccines, so we ask questions like, how are they different with COVID-19 to say that people will not enter the kingdom of God? So it was through uh, kind of uh, taking them through, uh, hearing their concerns. Some were just afraid because they had maybe somewhere, uh, some people talking and also other people, they felt they want to conceive. And so we had some evidence from other people who will receive the vaccine and now they are pregnant. So really, it really helped. We had a lot of uh, different examples, so which really created uh, those kinds of misconceptions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And what is something interesting that you learned about each other that you did not know from conducting this project? I'll be happy to start. Our students yeah. really enjoyed learning from the Malawi nursing students about how they sometimes specialize a little earlier on. And so in our program, we're more generalist in the VSN program, and they are exposed to many different specialty areas and med surge and, and whatnot. And uh, they learned from their friends in Malawi that they tend to specialize or have the option to specialize more and know that before they leave nursing school that they're going into community health and have more community health focused 
curriculum. And so our students really found that interesting. Um, of course, it was a surprise about the daylight savings time as we were working through that challenge about, you know, we honor it here and they honor it there. And so the time differences in scheduling I found from a faculty perspective was really interesting. Um, and then just, you know, in thinking about planning, um, we sometimes think about internet access being so widely available. One thing that I took away from the students in Malawi talking about bandwidth and websites that many of the resources we shared because of their internet connectivity issues, it was difficult for them to load things like the World Health Organization or CDC sites if they weren't on campus. And so when we say in our conversations that information is widely available and so is the internet, that's not always true for rural health communities. And so thinking about having the latest and greatest websites, also thinking and planning how to have access that is broadly available to everyone so that the you know, images and the videos that we find so helpful those aren't accessible to people who may be in rural communities with limited internet access. And so we know that's an issue, but that just really brought that to mind. So we learned lots of good things. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Our time is coming to an end. So once again, I would like to thank our presenters for sharing their experiences and the outcome of their Global Rural Nursing Virtual Collaboration Learning Grant. The 2022-2023 guidelines and eligibility requirements, as well as application, can be found on the grants page of the GRNEN website. Tomorrow, we will host our third grant presentation on the promotion of global health competencies, Moshi Tanzania, South Dakota Rural Community Nursing Project. And on Thursday, we will host In Touch, an international nursing technology outreach uniting for community health. Both presentations will begin at 9 a.m. U.S. Central Time and will also be recorded for on-demand listening. If you have any additional questions for Abby or Phoebe, I encourage you to contact them via GRNEN's online community where you can search for them in the member directory and connect directly through the site. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you to Thank both you. of you. Um, and congratulations you. on your work. And remember that if there are any things, any, any things that you learn from the students and their experience that might help to improve um, the grant as we move forward, then please let us know what that might look like. So okay. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.